Hello and welcome to The Federal. I'm Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay, your host for this program. Very recently, we are all aware that cheetahs have been reintroduced into Indian jungles, you know, at the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. This opportunity comes to us and gives us a chance to talk about a lot of issues related to Indian wildlife conservation. If the cheetahs was not enough for us to actually talk about wildlife conservation issues, it is also the 50th anniversary year of India's Omnibus Wildlife Act, the Wildlife Protection Act. That's the act which actually led to India's flagship program, Project Tiger, being started a year later in 1973. 1972, September, was exactly the time when the president signed the bill which was passed by parliament. It's also 30 years after the Project Elephant was started in 1992. So we have several landmarks. We have 1972, 50 years, 1992, elephant population stabilizing, and now we have the reintroduction of the cheetah. So to speak about these issues, about the state of India's wildlife conservation, the road ahead for the cheetahs, I have with me possibly the most eminent person that one can actually speak of, somebody who is a living legend in the field of wildlife conservation, Dr. M.K. Ranjit Singh, who has been or was an IAS officer right from the early 1960s, 1961 to be precise. So you can all understand the extent of path which he's traveled. And in this entire period, he's been, he's had several positions as collector in a district in Madhya Pradesh, he was instrumental for, you know, a lot of wildlife reforms. As a, as the Secretary of Forest and Tourism in Madhya Pradesh, he expanded the number of sanctuaries and national parks. Besides, of course, increasing the area of the national parks which are already existing at that time. He was also one of the prime architects, somebody who drafted the Wildlife Protection Act in 1972. Worked with several prime ministers right from Indira Gandhi onward to Mr. Narendra Modi, the latest, during the cheetah reintroduction. He's also written, of course, several books and constantly keeps on writing on wildlife issues in several places and newspapers. So welcome to the program, Dr. Ranjit Sin. It's really a pleasure to speak to you uh, on, on such an important topic. We've had a lot of news being discussed about the cheetah. We know that there was a Supreme Court stay on the issue, which got vacated in 2020. Thereafter, once again, the project was revived. There have been questions about whether this is reintroduction of the cheetah in India, or is it actually introduction of the new species? There has been a certain amount of controversy at the backdrop, but I think there is also a very important for us to look, not just assess into uh, these issues which have come up, but also look at what lies ahead for the cheetah. What has to be done? As you were saying in the conversation earlier with me, that this should not become just a safari park. There is much to be done ahead. I would like to hear you about the challenges of the cheetah project now onward. Thank you very much. Uh, the cheetahs have arrived. So... Mm -hmm. There is not much point in um, arguing about uh, why have they come and whether it is suitable or not. One has said that over and over again. As I have um, said um, on another occasion, the event has occurred, the event of arrival. But the real re rehabilitation, restoration and reintroduction starts now. They are in small cages. They will have to be then released in the larger Comas, where they will be able to hunt um, the Indian prey, get acclimatized to and, and uh, uh, familiarized with uh, the Indian situation, the Indian prey. And then comes the question of the release. Now, that is uh, that point onwards that the real reintroduction starts. Uh, there is far too much focus on Kunu itself. Right. Kunu is just the start. And Kunu Sanctuary or National Park is not going to be the main difficulty or the main um, 
the objective to be addressed. Tichita will go out. For right. Us. And therefore, what we need to do is to is to safeguard them outside in the communities around it. They have to have a stake in it. They have to take pride in it, in it just like the people of Manipur take pride now in their Manipur. Rao and Tlati the Sangai and the people around Gir, despite the damage the lions do, have a great sense of pride in about the lions. The lions. That's right. Now, <clears throat> that has to be built up. They must get an economic benefit. This has to be a joint project of not only the government of India, but of the state government and not only the forest department. The entire administration, district administration, the district collector, and I have used it in my time. And now there are many more development schemes than what I did in Mandla in 68 and 69, 70. Those have to be harnessed so that the local people, and mind you, these local people are not ordinary uh, tribes. They are Saharias, Beans, Mogias. Their tradition was uh, trapping and hunting. Right. They need to be weaned. They need to be given a, a, a stake in it. And they, from being uh, hunters, they need to be made protectors. That's a challenge. But it has to be met. Because in a democracy like ours, we cannot save it from the barrel of the gun anymore. We have to have the people with us. Right. That is going to be one very big challenge. And that has to be addressed. At least from today. It should have been done earlier. The, uh, the NGOs have to be involved. For cattle compensation, livestock. Luckily, the cheetah won't kill livestock. They will kill sheep and they won't kill cattle and, and buffalo. They will kill maybe the uh, the uh, sheep and goats for which immediate compensation has to be done, uh, given full compensation. Right. For that, we need NGOs who can do hand holding also as catalysts, as the wire media between the people and the girls. So that is one part of the story. <clears throat> and the buffer of the parks matter more than even. Then comes the other uh, story, and I could go on. Then yes, Kunu is the first starting point. There have been three other areas identified. Successful introduction in Kunu is just one step. Right. So, which are the other it ones? It has to be a part of a meta population, okay. and that meta population means a, a segment of the total population of the country. The total reintroduction sites. We cannot, we do not have the landscapes as we do in, in parts of Africa. Our right. parks are small and there is human habitation around it. So it has to be in a number of sites. And three other sites have already been selected. They need to be upgraded right. from today. So we need to have more sites and those more sites need to be built up. It can't be done overnight. Right, sir. That, those are the challenges ahead. No, actually, you have flagged off all the challenges ahead. Just a small question, you know, just because to satisfy the curiosity of the viewers, that uh, when do you think that from this captive uh, area where the cheetahs are, are they going to be actually, uh, what we can say possibly, let free, you know, to be going around Kuno National Park? How long would this process of acclimatization take? Would we be able to, well, is it really uh, possible to hazard a guess or do you think that we'll have to keep on, you know, taking an assessment as they adapt to the surroundings? You can appoint a date or it's landing in India and coincide it with the, uh, the, the, uh, the birthday with the, of the Prime Minister and why not? But the release has to be according to the, the condition of the individual animal, right. whether he's ready to go out into the open. Okay. 
whether he is he is and it will not be one it would be a coalition also coalitions right. in cheetah are very important because one cheetah can only pull down a certain sized animal two or three right. cheetahs combined can pull out what is called a coalition and in a coalition also you don't let out all three together or two together you let out right. one let him hover around let him get they must get acclimatized otherwise if you just release them they'll run so this depends upon how far have i mean when somebody goes through a a, a surgery do you decide on the date of his discharge oh, i i i think you have made your point very uh, you know very using very correct uh, metaphor that you really can't decide it has to depend on the kind of recovery one makes you refer to the cheetah being brought back on to time with the prime minister's birthday now this is actually uh, you know triggered a question in my mind which has been there right from the time i was very young uh, there has been always a certain amount of uh, uh, you know male machismo attached to hunting initially when we were very young and then subsequently even we have seen constantly pictures of old princes and you know with the with the dead animals with the rifles in their hands we have seen previous prime ministers holding tiger cubs i remember seeing photographs of indira gandhi with tiger cubs uh, even jawaharlal nehru with uh, you know certain wildlife very exotic species so do you think that this continuing with the same tradition of the prime minister personally going dressed up for the occasion in definitely what is what could possibly said jungle attire does this in any way uh, you know prevent this what you are saying that eventually the people have to be made stakeholders in the survival of the wildlife of the country and not actually having an adversarial relationship with that how do you look at this you raised a very interesting question and uh, i have tried to answer this in my book um that is, india is a paradox india despite its humongous pressure poverty population ignorance is one of the easiest countries in the whole in the in the whole world in the developing country world right. to save conservation we are vegetarian we have an empathy for nature all religions teach about the sanctity of life we are from in the in the land of buddha mahavir and and mahatma gandhi we are passive conservationists there are some communities we are active like the bishnoi but we are passive conservation in india has always come from the top not from bottom we don't have a green party and unfortunately <laughs> conservation nature conservation forget wildlife doesn't get votes and that's and that's a sad that's, part of that's something sad yeah, so the conservation comes from the top in this country i was able to i gave the idea to mrs indira gandhi she made me uh, put me in charge of the wildlife of india and i drafted the wildlife act and i it happened because i had the prime minister's support right the cheetah in india have come because of the prime minister's support right and it is very good i'm very glad it came on his birthday it focused greater attention it was you see it was happy returns of on two scores happy returns to the prime minister of the day happy returns to the prodigal son lost son of india the chita with his patronage uh, things have moved it has given it a great importance and i'm very grateful to the prime minister for that As, as far as as far as the other angle is concerned i could go on but time may, if it permit about people standing with um, with the guns on and all that <laughs> that's Please, another issue like to look, you know you know uh, hear you about on, on that particular point you know this attack flaunting of having killed animals you know that has also been an integral part of our culture <laughs> um as i keep on saying i was born in an era yes, where tigers were meant to be shot 
and partridges were meant to be eaten. Right. You see? And, but we made the difference. Look, it is always fronted out. And I do not, you know, I will be blamed because of my background that I'm taking the side of uh, the hunters. Certainly not. I do not subscribe to when you, the, this when, sort of when, when you say about your background, you're referring to your royal past. Eh? Your yes. Your link with, yes, link with the royalty uh, of Wampanoag in Gujarat. Yes, but I, I was brought up in that milieu. But right. please remember this. <clears throat> there was no wildlife act. In those days, <laughs> the British there some, Act there some British laws. No, only the Indian Forest Act of 1927, which controlled hunting in hunting blocks. There was no preservation, no all yes. these national parks, Corbett, they came up with a separate act. Nothing was there. But there was an unwritten law. Nobody can shoot anything in a princely state without the permission of the of the the Maharaja. Right. <laughs> Nobody dared to. And the hunting was the ultimate act of selfishness. I shall kill, thou shalt not. It okay. was a total autocracy of that nature. And and therefore they saved the the tiger and the, with it the whole habitat for hunting purposes. But with it, that saved the entire uh, cascade of animals. And what is more important, the habitat. When I became the director of wildlife for the first time under the Act in 1972, under the Act, more than 85% more than of our protected areas were the hunting reserves of the British and of the princes. Right. They were there. Then, then, <laughs> because of that, you see, <laughs> hunters are predators, and there is an unwritten, there is a known adage in the uh, no predator drives his prey to extinction, but the people can. <laughs> no one family can drive any animal to extinction. There have been one or two exceptions, and I know it. Right. Nobody can, but the people can. There was a time at the beginning of the last century, 1902, when, when Lord Curzon was invited to shoot the legendary life. You see, it was a great thing for the princes to offer to the viceroys, the political agents, the governors, the and brother expedition. Yeah, that was a status symbol. And the bigger the tiger, the better. And things like that. Right. So uh, the greater the uh, you know like you give uh, it to the uh, to the sofa to the present. Now, when when he went to the gear, uh, Jonagad, Lord Curzon was told that there are only twenty lions left. Right. And you know he did not shoot a lion. He wrote a letter to the the Nawab to say that the lion should be protected and it should not be hunted. He didn't shoot one himself. All credit to him. Now, <clears throat> there were not 20 lions then. There were probably 50, 60. But they had gone through a terrible bottleneck and the population declined. There were at that time more lions in, in uh, more cheetah in India in 1902 than there were lions in this country. Right. The lions survived because they had a two godfathers. The house of, I've said that before, the house of Junagat and the, because the entire world population was divided into two princely territories. Junagat Gir and the Baroda Gir. The Baroda right. Gir under the redoubtable Maharaja Sehaji Rao Gaita. Two godfathers saved the lion. The cheetah had no godfather. And you know what happened. So there's, so there's one question which I want to ask you is that in recent years we have seen a lot of man-animal conflict because of good success in conservation, the wildlife conservation. We've seen fairly frequent straying of wild animals even in urban areas. Now, uh, I, you know, we, have, we see these in um, 
you know, in in Gir area, we see that in across various tigers, leopards uh, coming into urban spaces almost every day. Even in uh, even in Delhi or its uh, surroundings, we keep on hearing about leopards straying into human uh, you know habitation areas. We also have this absolutely frightening monkey menace. You know, anywhere in India you go, especially in religious places, or even in the heart of the Indian capital, you have. This great reverence for the monkey as a result of which the population goes unchecked. It simply cannot go on this way. You know, as somebody who's part of the conservation, how do you look at this issue, which could actually become very counterproductive for wildlife conservation? Look, as far as man animal conflict is concerned, amongst the great cats, the five great cats of India, uh, the Cheetah will cause the least problem. Okay. Because it doesn't, there's no record whatsoever uh, of a cheetah killing a human being. Right. There is no uh, uh, chance of a cheetah killing a cattle or a buffalo. But yes, it will kill sheep and goats. And that has to be resolved, as I said earlier, by immediate compensation. But of all those five, it's a less. But you have raised a general question. Yes. of man-animal conflict. That's right. Firstly, firstly, we have driven them into small little isolated pockets. <clears throat> and then, yes, they will spill out. Have we, have we established a single new place or even a corridor for them to move from one habitat to another? That's right. That's a big challenge. Please tell me how many new parks and sanctuaries have been declared in the 22 years of the current century. As compared to how many we have denotified. Even in my state of Madhya Pradesh, where I set up 14 new sanctuaries right. and 9 new parks, three sanctuaries have already been denotified. We have reduced the population, we have reduced the area of coverage. You see, the habitat, including in, uh, the other thing is, in the Anamon record, the lions of the Gir, the, uh, the lions of Saurashtra and Gujarat, the lion population has increased. The right. park, there are five protected areas, the Gir National Park, Gir Sanctuary, Girnar, Panya, and Mithya. Right. They have spilt out they have, have they exceeded the carrying capacity. They have gone in the neighboring areas. They are killing cattle. <clears throat> and not one, I think, not one square kilometer of protected area has been added for them. I have written uh, when I was there for the last enumeration uh, six years ago, seven years ago, that <laughs> this is <laughs> this is uh, the land reclaiming its own territories. Are we doing anything about it? We have the government of Gujarat, instead of adding the area, I regret to say this, have reduced the critical mm -hmm. area around the park. Now you go inside into their habitat and you expect them not to do anything about it, not to kill them, not to object. So if you go there and if you get attacked, your cattle is still man-animal. Who asked you to go inside? You're not allowed inside. So, I mean, all the time we blame and we provide them with nothing. There is something more. We are feeding them so that they become tame and they become... Uh, you. Uh, uh, tourist shows are being run. That's I've right. seen videos of chickens being fed to the lions. What do you expect? Will they be, I mean, is that, is that something that you should, and if then the, the, the lion comes and you see, please remember this. One should not be afraid of animals, never. But there should right. be mutual respect. They should respect you and you should respect them. Hmm? If you go, go that, then you are in for a problem. I, I think, sir, you have flagged a very important point, you know, that there should be mutual respect. And yes, you did mention about tourism and actually tourists behaving virtually like 
uh, like animals, if I can actually use that and you think they're feeding them chicken, it actually, I even I have seen those videos. So I think that there is a lot to be done about conservation, about changing the mindset of people. Also, you have laid out the, the roadmap for the cheetah ahead, which has to be done. A lot of work has to be done uh, by the government, by the state governments, by the local administration, and also how to make uh, the people of India as partners of wildlife conservation. At the moment, they continue to be, you know, as if you go to a, a national park, as if you're going to a zoo. So that mentality has changed. And I think you have flagged some very important uh, you know, issues in this discussion. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh, very much. May I say here. one last word? Yes, sir. The role is equally important for you, people like you, the media. The media must spread this word too. That this is not the way to behave. That the tiger is not the be-all and end-all of everything. It's, it's our national animal. But it is not the end of the of, of and not the be all of an end all of Indian conservation. So we will make once again a new beginning with this particular program and appealing to our viewers that they also have their responsibility. The media also has, and we are going to be playing that role. And we implore among the people to understand and be more, you know, understanding of the wildlife conservation issues in the country. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit Singh, very much for Thank you. coming to and discussing this very crucial issue with us. Thank you, sir.